Hello everyone, Blue Knight here, and welcome back to yet another Ratchet and Clank video. So as some of you guys are likely aware of, the past few days have been absolutely crazy when it comes to our favorite Lombax robot duo, with the release date and the pre-order details for Rift Apart dropping this past Thursday, and then the pilot episode for the first ever Ratchet and Clank TV show basically getting shadow dropped out of nowhere this past Friday. Which I'm honestly really surprised that all of this stuff happening for Ratchet and Clank in such a short span of time, so it's been very interesting to say the least. But I'm rather shocked that this pilot episode premiered with no marketing whatsoever. Nor did Insomniac Games, the creators of the Ratchet and Clank series, say anything at all about this premiering. Especially given that this series, as a whole, is considered a vital IP, as stated by Sean Layden, who is the former head of PlayStation Worldwide Studios back in 2020 when PlayStation first acquired Insomniac Games. Now look, I can understand why Insomniac, or even PlayStation, didn't make it apparently obvious that this show even premiered. Because think about it, if they came out and announced that this show was premiering and said, Oh, by the way guys, it's only available in Canada right now, so if you're outside of Canada, you'll have to wait a bit longer to see it. I just couldn't see an announcement like that being taken very well, and they're likely fully aware of this. However, that hasn't necessarily stopped Sony from publicly acknowledging the Ratchet and Clank pilot episode after its discovery started spreading around the web like wildfire. When Sony was asked by IGN about this pilot episode, here's what they had to say. Ratchet and Clank Life of Pi is a standalone licensed animated special created and distributed by Mainframe Studios. The show is not related to the upcoming Ratchet and Clank game for PlayStation 5, aka Rift Apart and is not official canon to the franchise's video game narrative. So Sony not only confirmed that this pilot is part of a full-fledged TV show, but that the pilot episode is not canon to Rift Apart, nor the narrative of the games. Okay, so, uh, which narrative are they referring to exactly? Because we got two narratives at this point, the main series and the 2016 reimagining. Well, it's kind of obvious that they're referring to the main Ratchet and Clank series, which includes the classic PS2 games and the future saga on the PS3. Because Rift Apart essentially serves as a continuation of the last game in the main series, that being Into the Nexus from back in 2013. So that leaves us with the question, does this pilot episode take place within the timeline of the reimagining? Well... At first glance, it could seem like that it's in the same timeline, with the models being almost exactly the same as the movie. Ratchet's ship is what he initially used in both the movie and the PS4 game, before getting his own Star Jumper ship after joining the Galactic Rangers. The Deplanetizer is mentioned in the show, with Dr. Nefarious' space station bearing a strong resemblance to it. Although it looks like it was partially rebuilt using the remains that were left on planet Umbrus, the warbots from the reimagining are here, albeit they're a little bit more advanced in terms of movement, personality, and vocals. Oh, and uh, Zed is here too. And this is where the inconsistencies start to come into play. Because if you watched the movie, you would know that later on in the film, Zed switches sides to work for the Galactic Rangers, and I guess somehow that led him to take special care of prisoners like Captain Quark. So with that in mind, him teaming back up with Nefarious doesn't really make sense when we're trying to make connections to the reimagining. Now, Captain Quark being like a spokesperson at a pizza place does kind of make sense considering he's most likely not part of the Rangers anymore, hence why he was in prison at the start of the PS4 reimagining. That was until Ratchet offers him to tag along as they track down Shiv Helix, likely assuring his freedom to do other things after they finished their mission. But then here comes inconsistency number two, and I kind of already touched upon this in my previous video, but this is just something that I left out. The way Ratchet reacts to Captain Quark is a little bit weird, like, he sees Captain Quark as a nuisance that tends to mess everything up. Ratchet's never done that in the reimagining, because he's always looked up to Quark as a hero, even risking both him and Clank's lives to save Captain Quark even though he had already betrayed them. So this is just very out of place, but let's give it the benefit of the doubt for just a second. And imagine that Quark, 
after tagging along with the duo at the end of the 2016 game, started messing things up for them wherever they go, just like Ratchet says in the pilot episode. And this is what gets on Ratchet's nerves and to the point where he just doesn't want to be around Quark anymore. But he tries to put up with Quark while he's around. Now, I've been reading your guys' comments under the previous video, and I think a very good point was made about Ratchet's overall behavior in this pilot episode. I can't remember who said it, but it was an interesting comparison to Ratchet's its behavior in the original 2002 game that started this whole series, where he's adventurous, immature, and kind of a jerk. But in the end, he starts to care more about Clank and repairs his broken arm, and the two become best pals after that. And I think that's a very interesting parallel to what this pilot episode did with Ratchet's personality. And it's actually something that I think some fans, like myself, would look right over if they weren't paying attention. Like, that was something I didn't even catch after watching this pilot episode twice. Well, at least until you guys brought it up. So again, you guys are awesome. But even with the little bit of character development that Ratchet gained in the movie, it still seems to have been put in reverse for the sake of this pilot episode. Then some of you guys might be wondering why does Clank have all these extra abilities now? Like using thrusters and the hollow knuckles from Seeker Agent Clank? Well, these aren't really inconsistencies because they do fall in line with what the movie established. Like Clank's thrusters, for instance. Ilaris tells Clank that his thrusters were powered by Ratchet's suit, and to not try any solo flights. Well, we've seen how that turned out. And basically, he was acting as Ratchet's jetpack in the movie, despite not having the same appearance as the game. And as for Clank using weapons, he can pretty much use anything Ratchet can, like the Thunder Smack in the movie, and the Suck Cannon in the pilot episode. Although it would have been nice if Clank had the Hollow Knuckles in the reimagining, because he could have laid the smack down on Victor Von Ion instead of just running away. But hey, it is what it is. So with these inconsistencies in mind, I'm gonna take it that the Ratchet and Clank TV show is an entirely brand new timeline altogether. While it does seem to have ties to the reimagining, but looking at things a bit closer, the connections just seem to be a whole lot thinner than what's on the surface. Now, to a newcomer, some of this stuff isn't really going to matter, because it's obvious that this show is trying to cater to everyone who likely came into the series with the reimagining or the movie, and would instantly recognize this version of the characters. But, it's also got so much fan service for the existing fan base that it just feels a bit more balanced than the movie this time. Albeit a tad more goofy, I'm looking at the whole Pizzaverse thing. Although, there's one thing I'll never understand is how the Bio-Obliterator from Up Your Arsenal went from this huge transforming robot to be the tiny Dynamo of Doom from A Crack in Time, with a reverse button. I don't know about you, but there's some false advertising going on here. So anyways guys, that's going to be about it for today's video. As always, be sure to leave your thoughts about this down in the comments section below, and also be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell to stay up to date on all things Ratchet and Clank. And once again, thank you all so much for watching and for support. I've been Blue Knight, and I'll see you guys back here next time. What?